Hello, I'm Jeff Peacock, and we're here with lab number 12 today. And this will be the last time we get to be on the machines. Uh, we'll get our last part done, all right? The part we're going to be working on is part number one, which is the body. It is probably the most complex. It's not super complex, but it incorporates a lot of what we've learned throughout the semester into this one part, all right? I hope you have developed the process plan already for this, all right? I'll give you my process plan the way I can do it. You can cheat off of me, that's all right. Um, this is the way I like to do it. It doesn't mean it's the right way. It doesn't mean it's the wrong way. It's just my way, okay? So um, what I'll do is I'll just kind of give you my thought process through this. All right. so. I got this part right here. This is the a really rough drawing of what the body looks like. All right. So I'm going to go through and, and figure out uh, a quick process plan. All right. I got the first thing I ask myself is how many setups am I setups am I going to have? I'm going to have. All right. We've got a hole that comes in the bottom. We've got a hole on this face of the part. And we've got all these features on this face of the part, all right? So I kind of look at that and let that soak in a little bit. And what I'll probably end up doing, actually this is what I'll do, is I'm going to do this face right here first, all right? The face with all the features. I'll do that as setup number one. I'll do this as setup number two. And then down here, it's just the tapped hole. So um, sometimes tapped holes can be a little tricky, but usually. There's nothing that scares me about them. I'll do that as number three. So that's going to be my setup order. I've got to have three, one, two, three. All right, so number of setups, three. And I've just already figured out which order I'm going to do them in. I'm going to do. the face with all the features and then number two I'll just say is a side hole and then number three I want as a bottom hole all right so that's the order I'm going to want to go I got to look at critical features. All right. Critical features. So, right now, the only thing I really see is this right here. Put a little star by that. That's going to be a critical feature. It's in the fourth decimal place, which I know later on we'll need to be reamed. Let's see, is there any, there's nothing else with really um, tight tolerances. All right. The one thing I do know is the distance between these two holes are really going to be critical, all right? Because what's going to happen is our cylinder that we use or that we made last week is going to ride on this right here and it's going to want to go back and forth like so all right and it's got to match up with that little hole that we put in to the cylinder all right so as it's swinging it's got to overlap these holes so if i get these hole positions all wrong when this cylinder swings and pivots along this 
if that hole doesn't swing over and fully go over the hole, uh, I'm going to be losing power. If it doesn't match up at all, then I'm not going to get any power. But if, if the more those holes line up, uh, the bigger burst of air you're going to get in, all right? And also, um, the better exhaust, all right? So if you're kind of work, wondering how this all works, all right? So you, unfortunately, haven't really seen how these operate, all right? What we're going to do, I'll, I guess I'll just explain real quick how this is all going to work. Our air is going to go in through this hole, all right? Going to go in this hole. This hole and this hole are connected. They intersect. So wherever they intersect, the air is going to come out of this hole. That's going to be our intake. All right. It's going to come out of this hole. All right. Which is going to pressurize our cylinder while pushing our, our piston down on the power stroke. And as it goes around, piston as it's coming back up on its upstroke is going to that hole where it just got this shot of air it's going to come back around and exhaust through the back end of this all right this is going to be a through hole so it's going to exhaust out the back so the intake is going to come in the side get turned 90 degrees into the cylinder, and then pressurize your cylinder, then as it comes around, the piston comes up and forces the air out and exhausts out the back. All right, so if you're, sometimes it's a little difficult to just see through different parts and you don't know how it's gonna, how it's all starting to interact, but that's how it's gonna be, all right? so. These holes, knowing which one's our intake hole and which one is our exhaust hole, is really going to be critical, all right, um, in the next steps. Okay, so critical features, I would just say, is this hole and probably those, both the location and the depth of these holes are going to be kind of what's important. All right, be the fastest way to scrap this part is if we mess up on these little holes. All right, and our origin, we'll figure there's nothing tricky about this part. We still got a, a squared piece. Um, so we're able to find origins pretty easily. So let's not worry about where each origin um, is going to be placed on this because there's nothing really tricky about this geometry. All right, so setup one is going to be this face. So let me erase the board real quick and we'll work through setup number one. All right, so we're back here. We're going to discuss setup number one. All right, so setup number one has a lot of different features. All right, so what we're going to want to do is figure out which operations and which order makes the most sense. Depending on what's maybe more, we gotta take into account what's more critical, what our machine capabilities are, and what will give us the best chances of having something that is, comes out correct, right? Dimensionally correct and accurate. All right, so let's take a look. So first, this is just the face that we're gonna deal with first, all right? We got to figure out where we're going to put the origin on this, all right? So, origin again is going to be critical where we decide, all right? So this is going to be the this is the top side, all right? And this is the bottom, all right? If we were to stand it stand it straight up, all right? Which edge are the dimensions coming from? Well, if you look, they're all being pulled from this edge, all right? All of, all of our dimensions. So we know we want the origin to be along this edge. 
All right. So you could either have it at this corner or this corner. I just choose I just choose that one, that corner. All right. You can choose this one if you want. I just happen to always choose that one. Just a habit that I've gotten into. All right. So now this is where our origin will be. All right. So what are the first? We got to think about how we're going to make this. All right. So which features would make the most sense? All right. We've got these milled flaps right here, which I guess I can hash like this. I'll dash those. All right. Those are very. Those aren't critical at all. We have this critical feature here. All right. We've also want to really make sure we're on it with these uh, the spacing of these two small holes. All right. So if I was sitting right here, what would be the first feature that I'd want to do? This is what I would try to do. Come down here and do that. So I'll just make that one. I'll just say that's number one. All right. So if I make that feature, what should be the next feature for me? Some people say, let's go to these small holes. But what's going to happen if we go down to these small holes? I'm going to have to then make a movement in my Y. All right. So. I don't want to have to use my Y axis yet. All right. So what I can do is just come over here and make this feature. It's already in the same line. All I'm doing is just one axis of travel in my X. All right. So that would be number two. I guess you probably can't see that. So that would be number two. All right. This is just my thinking. So, what I can do is go backwards, right? I don't want to come backwards to uh, these holes, right? Because then I incorporate backlash. In the same way, I didn't want to go to these little holes. And I'll show you why we didn't want to, I didn't want to do these little holes first. Because if I would have stopped right here, let's pretend for a moment that we're not going here, that we're just going to stop at these holes, all right? If I go down and get that hole, that's fine because as I set up my origin, my edge finder was up here dancing around and I came down. So we're going in this direction, right? So if I was there and I went down to get to that hole, that's okay because that's the way uh, we set up our origin. All right? The problem lies is when I go back in this direction, to get to that small hole, the, excuse me, to get to the, the other hole, the other small hole. So that's where I get my backlash. And remember, this distance right here was really cri quite critical, okay? So what I want to do is not have all of that backlash for a motion that goes, um, uh, I guess, in a positive Y, all right? So that's why we chose just to stay in one axis, and I chose to do that so I can stay in one axis. So what I don't want to do now that I have decided to do this as number two, I can't come right back, okay? Because essentially this makes a triangle that we all need to stick to. So what do I need to do? I need to come back all the way out and come return to my zero, if that makes sense, all right? Return to my origin. All right, we want to come all the way up and down and around to get back to my origin. That way I can go I've kind of reset my system, all right? So, once I'm back here to my origin, 
I can go this way, which is fine, because that's how I establish my origin. It's going in this direction, so I continue can continue to go in that direction, and I can go down, all right, because I came from this direction to establish my Y. All right, so this would be number three, my third operation, and this would be my fourth. All right. I hope this makes sense because we're doing we're doing all of this so we're not working in backlash. Okay, because we're all we when we have our origin set up in right now, if you think the upper left corner, I need to always I always need to go to a feature in this direction or down from the top. Alright? Because that's how I established my origin, all right? My edge finder came, found that edge, and would have had to come down to find this, this edge, right? Which puts it right here. So every time you move to a feature, you need to be going in, in this direction, and in this direction, which we achieved here. We went down, and then to the right. And then we returned back to here, and went to the right, and down. So those are the two ways we always want to go um, to get to a feature. All right. If you ever have to go back to the right or up, if you will, if, if you're looking at this, um, you're going to incorporate all the backlash in the machine, and you're just not going to have a very accurate part. All right. So after four, we're done with drilling type operations or hole making, all right? So all we have left are these two little uh, reliefs. And all they are just little reliefs, so um, your flywheel as it's going in here, excuse me, your crank, the back side of your crank face is not rubbing up against this material, all right? So it's not, not a, a super critical feature, so. This would be number five and number six. They're just relief. They're just little slots that we're going to put in there with an end mill. That's what I would do. That's, that would be my order of operations. All right? So if we're to flesh out an actual um, process plan, my work holding would still be my vice. Laid in the horizontal fashion, all right? Laid in the horizontal, all right? So, op one, my first operation was right here, was this hole. I guess when you circle that, you can't see it. Just... So was this first hole, and that was a kind of a critical hole, because that's our ring hole, all right? So. I'm not going to go through how I figured out which tools and everything or the depths and all that because by this point, that's something you should have done on your own. All right? So the tools for this ream, reamer, you're going to need the center drill. You're going to need the number 16 and the 1885 reamer, right? We've made this hole a bunch already in other parts, so... Here we are again, making it. All right, so op two. So we're right here, we made a ream. What do we have to do with this hole? We've got to make a threaded hole or tapped hole, right? We're gonna to have to tap this. All right, so what are we gonna to need to tap this? Well, we're going to need to drill it, right? So we're going to have to have a center drill. All right? And then we have to look at the, the, drill, uh, the drill chart that's all on the wall downstairs. And you'll see this is a, what is it, a 1032. 
So if you look at that chart, you'll need a number 21 drill. And you'll need the 1032 tap. So those are the two, those are the tools you'll need. One thing I will say that you you won't have known uh, from experience, but this isn't a, is not a through hole. All right, you can see uh, that it is actually given a depth. All right, so when we're drilling this. Um, what I like to do is leave about 50 thousandths before I break through the back side. So, all right, um, let's just say this is a three-dimensional drawing now, all right? So, if I drill this too far into the part, what's gonna happen on the, is on this back side, it's gonna have a little dimple where the drill started to try to break through and it's kind of pushing material, all right? If it doesn't bother you, then you can do it, but I don't like to have that little dimple on the back side because what happens is this back side is pretty much flat on the back side, but now if I've got a little dimple on the back side, if I had to hold on to this in a certain way, I could run into a chance where I actually hold on to this dimple or that this that dimple if may um, kick up my part at some weird angle. So. What I like to do is to avoid that is leave about 50 thousandths right here. All right, about a 50 thousandths gap. All right, so our part is 0.375. If I minus the 50 thousandths, So, on this, since it doesn't go all the way through the part, I probably only want to drill about 325. I'll give you that dimension, or I'll give you that depth because you wouldn't know that that, that dimple would happen. But I just don't like the dimple on the back side. All right, it can screw up your part later on down the road, or at bare minimum makes it look weird. All right, so, so those are our two things. Now we have to remember right here, between two and three, return to origin. Very critical step right in here. You're always, let's get rid of that. All right, it's a very critical step right in here, return to origin, right? We're gonna take out all the backlash and come back to our origin. All right, so op three. All right, so we're here, we return to origin, and then op three, we're just gonna have to move down in the X, and then into the, po excuse me, in the positive X, and then down into the negative Y to get to this hole, all right? So, that doesn't have a very critical tolerance, right? That's just a regular drilled hole. All right. So that's just gonna be a drilling operation. All right, we're gonna need our center drill. And that 1 16th drill. Right now, this is where I see a lot of people mess this part up. All right, they get these holes confused. All right, they don't know which hole is supposed to be the intake, which one's supposed to be the exhaust. All right, it's very important that you know which one it is. All right, so once this, we'll just say our. Our 
hole that we're going to put in is going to be on this face, on this side, at a later on. All right, we just we just wrote this here just so we can visualize. Our intake is going to be here, so this has to be my intake hole. All right, so on my intake hole, if you look at your drawing, you can orient orientate your drawing to see that it's going to be in this part. I know maybe you can't see it on screen, but down here you'll have a detail A on this drawing. It will tell you the depth of that. It says to go down 0.29 into here. I see a lot of people go all the way through with this. If you go all the way through the back of the park, the air is going to come in and instead of taking the 90 degrees towards the cylinder to pressurize it, it's going to take the path of least resistance straight out of the back of your park. So your intake you're going to have a direct line from your intake to an exhaust, okay? So, we don't want to do that, all right? You're just cutting out the cylinder portion, all right? So, right here, we've got to make sure that we only go 0.29. It's going to be critical that we don't go all the way through, all right? So, that's number three. So the next thing we're going to do is come down to number four, all right, which is the other small hole. All right, so it's going to be the same tool, same everything. All right. Same as above. It's going to be the same exact tool. The only reason I I broke these two out separately is because they've got different depths, all right? Different depths. So what's this one going to do? This is our exhaust hole. And I talked about it just a few moments ago that this exhaust hole exhausts out to the back of the out to the back of the uh, air engine, okay? So this one's going to be a through hole. It will actually say it also on that detail A. All right? So, so the depth I just put us through, all right? That's going to be the critical thing. If you swap these two, your air engine is not going to run, and you get to make it all over, because a lot of people don't really realize it until they hook it up to the, to the test stand, which you'll see um, in the next lab once we assemble this. They won't figure it out until final assembly, and when they're pumping air in, and it's immediately going right out the back of their air engine and then they have to come back and remake this whole part from the beginning all right so just be careful that's why you always have your print in front of you if you come up with a plan and think about it through beforehand it lessens your chances of screwing up at the machine all right so anyhow so we've gotten there to number four put that in now we've got to do five and six, all right? I lumped those in together, all right? Because it's the same feature, we just have to change the location, all right? So, that's going to be a milling operation. And what's the width on those slots there? It's 0.19, all right? 0.19. So that's close enough to 3 16 Whoops, 3 16 for me. So I'll use my 3 16 end mill, and I'll show you when we actually demonstrate this at the thing. But we'll just bring our end mill and just barely touch this end, all right? And then we'll move to these locations and make those slots, all right? That's pretty easy. Um, there is one thing I like to advise people to do. All right, this is totally optional. It doesn't say to on the print, but I found it gives you a, a better part at the end. All right, so here's an optional operation. Optional thing would be to face this with an end mill. Okay, remember when they extrude these, that the surfaces are all kind of can be all kind of weird and warped and whatnot. 
if we just take a good, like our half inch or three eighths inch end mill, and then just dust this off, we're not taking off a lot. All we're doing is going to uh, just take off just a little bit to make a, a fresh face on there, something nice and flat, all right? Because this, this whole area, I know I'm getting covered up in, in colors and drawings here, but so this whole area right through here is all a mating surface with our cylinder, all right? So in the same way we faced off a little bit off of our cylinder just to clean up that surface, do the same thing here, then those two surfaces can mate really well, all right? If there's, so you're gonna have two mating surfaces. If you've got them all jaggedy, the, the, hole, the hole is supposed to be bringing in the air. And if those surfaces are like this, the air is just gonna escape out of, the, out of the gap between the two faces. Now, if those faces are together and they're moving like this against each other, there's a better transfer of air from one part to the, from the body to the cylinder. But again, if it's jacked like this, or your surface is all weird and it doesn't really mate very well or match up, then the air just seeps out, all right? It will get a large portion that actually goes in the cylinder, but you'll have a lot of air leakage, which actually um, will really kill the RPMs and, of your machine, all right, of your little air engine. So I like to just clean that up just so my those faces mate really well. The better they mate, always um, will improve your the performance of your engine. All right. So that was an optional one. I know it doesn't say to do it on the print, but you just have to know how this how this air engine works. Okay. So let me erase this, and we'll I'll just go through setup number two real quick, and setup number three. Setup two, we said we're going to put that little side hole in. All right. So here it is. I just sketched it out. This is the hole we're going to do. Obviously, that's the only thing on this on this setup. So it's going to be the one and only thing we got to do. So we got to decide where we're going to want our origin. And again, this was the bottom that all the dimensions are pulled from. So that will be my origin. Also, when we put this in the vise, it's going to be very important that we drill this on the correct side. All right? Because so as we roll this, this is this is the face that we just did and set up on. All right? That's the setup one. That's the face, all right? When we took that out of the vise, we want to roll that towards us, all right? So, so when you're looking at it from the front, all right, you should be able to see these little slots that you cut in, all right? These holes may be kind of down in the vise and you can't really see them, but you'll at least be able to see the edge of these things, all right? Last thing we want to do is put it through on the other side. Is it the end of the world? No, but you'll have, what that does is if you put it on the wrong side, you know, the exhaust will actually go out the back and the side. So it kind of have a dual exhaust. It sounds cool on a nice pickup truck, but here on these air engines, it does nothing for you. All right, so um, again, this is going to be the intake hole, which will be on the um, left side if you're looking at all these faces. So let's make sure you orient it. That's another sticking point for a lot of students is that they rotate it and put it on the other side, give themselves dual exhaust with no intake, and then of course it won't run with zero intake, right? So if we put it on the right side, so what are we going to do for work holding? Obviously in the vise still laid down horizontally. 
All right, this operation, if we look at the drawing, it's just a simple uh, dimension, no special call outs for tolerances, so it's just a drill. And what are we going to want to do? What size is it? It's that little 16th inch drill. All right, these little 16th inch drills, I'm going to tell you, you've got to be very, 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 very delicate with, okay? When we get to, when I show this on the, on the, um, the demonstration at the machine, um, you'll probably hear me say it a thousand more times, all right? This is usually what um, does it in for this part, is this side hole, all right? People break this off and there's no way of recovering your part, all right? So, I guess we got to figure out our depth, all right? So, this is going to come in, this is our inlet, our intake, and remember it's got to do that 90 degrees. So what we want to do is to that first intersection, the very first intersection, Alright, very first. As we're drilling this, we should feel it pop into the hole that should be already drilled into this face, right? That's the, I believe it was like operation number three that we did on this first face on setup one. We just want to break through and join those two holes, alright? Another problem I see is people drill, meet that first intersection, and then continue to drill until they meet the next intersection. What would the next intersection be? That would be your exhaust, all right? So if you drill too far, you drill all the way through your intake, and then get straight to your uh, exhaust, all right? I've seen it it will happen three, four, five times every semester. Someone drills this too deep, and what happens is the air comes in, and immediately it bypasses this 90 degree turn, right? Because it doesn't want to have to pressurize a chamber if it doesn't want to. It's just going to go straight and hit the exhaust and straight back out of the, out of the um, air engine. So you pretty much have just straight lined your intake and your exhaust leaving out the whole pressurizing your cylinder aspect of your engine. All right, so make sure we stop at the first intersection, all right? It should be pretty, you should be able to feel it pretty easily, all right? Do not drill so deep that you could join your intake and your exhaust. All right, so that was it for setup two. Jump over here to setup three. All right, setup three is just going to be the bottom, which is going to be the uh, the tapped hole in which so we can screw it down to the base. All right, so we're going to work hold this with the vise still. But it's going to have to be vertical. All right, so last. Uh, lab, what we did is we indicated that when we had to hold our cylinder vertical, we indicated one surface to get it truly upright, all right, and truly vertical. This one, I don't put in that much effort, okay? So what happens is, well, we're going to drill the hole, all right, and tap it, all right? But if it's a little bit off, okay, I would eyeball it, or I would line it up with the edge of the vise or something that you know is relatively vertical all right i mean not there when you put this bit put it onto the base if you drill that off a little and this part just is ever so slightly angled one way or another it's not really going to affect the the uh, air engine at all all right so i don't go and try to get it down into the thousands, all right? Because actually, the 
hardware that you use to connect these, the fastener isn't even going to hold it that um, that straight, all right, down to the thousands, all right. So because there's enough slop in those threads that it won't actually sit vertically, all right, even if you indicate it vertically. So I go and I just eyeball it and use some other reference geometry off like maybe the side of the vise or whatever, but I don't spend the time to indicate it. So what do we got to do here? If we look at the print, that bottom hole is a 1032. All right, so means we're going to have to tap this hole. All right, drill and tap. So it's going to be a threaded hole. All right. So what tools do we need? We're just going to need that number 21. You'll also need your center drill, but you'll need a number 21. And your 1032 tap. All right. One thing to note about this is when we drill this, we don't want to drill it so deep that, all right, so if we come back over here, look at the side view, what we don't want to do is drill it so deep that it starts to intersect with this. This is a nice control. We just ream that, right? In setup one, we ream that hole. So what we don't want to do is drill this hole through the bottom and uh, intersect this hole, all right? Because then it's going to tear up the inside, the nice smooth round board surface or ream surface that we've got. We also don't want to get so close that what happens is it makes that little bump in the back, right? Remember I said in setup one, when we're putting that tap thing, that tap hole in, we didn't want to go so far that the drill actually kind of bulges out and puts a little bump on the back, all right? Same thing is true here. We don't want to drill so, so close that we get to uh, this wall of the cylinder and put a little bump in there. Because when we put that shaft in there, we only have a one thou clearance there. So any little bump right there, I won't be able to get my flywheel, my crankshaft in there, all right? So what I like to do is make sure Make sure that there's that 50 thousandths. All right, this little gap, I kind of smudged that all weird, but make sure between the, the tip of your drill and the bottom of this hole, you have about 50 thousandths. That should avoid any sort of a bump being created into this ream surface. So, so your so your depth of this drill, you want uh, just to do the math on that. It does have a call out here um, on the drawing. It says 0 .38 uh, or three three hundred eighty thousand steep, which is fine. You can go a little bit more, but again, don't. Don't go as so far to make a bump in here. You should be all right. So that's setup number two. Setup number three, I guess I didn't tell you what the origin is here, but again, I would just choose that. We've only got one feature. It doesn't matter which side you come off of because it's right in the middle of the part. So that's how I would do that. Um, believe that's all I have for this. Um, so our next thing is um, I'll show you how to do this all at the machine. All right so we're here in the machine shop again. This is lab number 12. Uh, we're going to be making the body today. And I have been, I've shown you on the board my process plan that I like to to do this part with. Uh, if you have a different process plan, by all means, you can use 
your process plan that you may have come up on your own. So with my process plan, I already knew all the tools I need, so I got them all laid out in the order that which I'm going to need them. I've also got my material here, which again should have been, you should have already gotten to length. All right, we milled this to length in lab eight. So you should already have this piece. All right, and this is going to make our body, which has the most features. Some would say it's the most complex. I mean, a lot of, a lot of uh, your air engine's abilities does come from how well you manufacture this part. All right. So setup number one was doing the face that had all, most of the features on it. So the I like to do that one first. That way, if I've messed found find that I mess up, I'm not too far invested in it. All right, so. First thing I'm gonna do is lay down some parallels. And I'm gonna put this in the middle of the vise. There's no need for me to hang it up off the vise for any reason. We're just gonna go and set it up in the middle of the vise. Sure it sinks down in there as good as possible. All right, so that feels good. We're in there. All right, so the first thing we have to do is go ahead and find our origin. I, my personal preference is I always like to put my origin up in this upper left corner if you were looking at it from the top, the top view. It's just the way that I like to do things. If you find it a different way, suits you, you can do whichever you want to do. But remember that all the dimensions are, are pulled off the bottom. So at this point, we haven't made any features. So if you want to make this your bottom, have your origin come off of here. I'm going to have my origin be over here. So that's going to denote that that's going to be the bottom of my part going forward. All right, so first thing I, I'll do is at some point I'm going to want to face this off the same way we did, we skimmed the cylinder. So I'm just going to color this. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm not going to face that right now. But it helps to see the little center drill marks that I put in this. Because again, I like to just touch a little bit with my center drill, make a little mark and verify before I go ahead and cut that feature in that I'm in the right location. All right, so let's find the origin in this upper, upper left corner. finer in place. Right there, it kicked off. So I'll set a temporary zero. Then move in a hundred thousandths and go ahead and set my permanent zero. All right, so I've got my X zero. Now I'm going to come over and do my Y. There. 
I'll set a temporary zero. Move in a hundred thousands. And re-zero and set that as my permanent zero. So just to verify that I've got everything set up right, I can come over here to this zero. I'm still at zero here in my Y. I'll just bring down, straighten out my edge finder. Just verify that I didn't do something funny. But that looks like it's right over the center of the rotation, or the center line of the spindle is right over the edge of that part. Beautiful. All right, so the first thing I'll do is I'll, we're going to make the 1885 hole, that ream hole was my first operation. So and that's right on the center line of the part. All right, so that means I have to come in 188 thousandths to get to the center line of this 3 8 stop. All right. Let me just look. That looks like it's right down the center line of the of the park. So I'll go ahead and lock my Y. All right. So now with the X, I've still got it zeroed over here. So I have to find my first feature, which is a hundred, or excuse me. 0.625, so 625 thousandths from this bottom edge. And again, this is going to be the bottom of my part. So, I'll drive this in 625. So there's 200, 400, 625. All right, I'll lock my X. All right. Take my center, or my edge finder out. Now I'm gonna put the center drill in. make a little mark. Just a little mark. That's where the black sharpie helps. You get a little bit more contrast. And then again, I'm going to open up my calipers to 625. I'm going to lock them at that value. Then I'll come out the edge of the, my part and I can see that that little mark is right where it needs to be. It's always good to measure twice. All right. All right, there's my center drill. Alright, so this features a through hole and anytime we're drilling through material all the way through a part, we've got to know what's on the other side and unfortunately these parallels being in there, you'd hit them if you were to drill all the way through that material. So I'll take them out, I'll just make sure that this is good and tight. Alright. Again with this, when we are drilling here, we don't want to um, cut so hard that it moves our our piece in the vise. All right. So just drill it nice and soft and easy, and everything will be good. All right. So right now I've got my number sixteen drill.
we'll take that out. And now we'll replace it with the 1885 reamer. Okay. This is where our crankshaft is going to come through the body. So we want it, that's the reason we want a nice controlled bore. Nice ream hole here. Alright, and I'll just ream this all the way through. Nice and slow entering, breaking through, and then getting out quickly. Okay. We can take our number two center drill, since we're using that 1885 reamer, we can slip this in there just to double check that we use the right size uh, reamer. It's going to be very difficult to pick up on all these features if you accidentally take it, or if you take it out. All right. So we'll check it while it's still there. All right. So that one looks good. That was our first operation for setup one. Now the next operation we want to do is to make the 1032 tap tool. Okay. And by the drawing that says that location, it's still in the center line of the park. It's at 1.938. All right, so we'll go there. Got to loosen up my, my box. So it's at 675, so I'll come around here. And that will be 800. I'll be at one inch, 1 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8. There's 1.9, and I got 38 thousandths more to go. All right, 138, I'll lock, excuse me, 1.938 is where we're at, hopefully. All right, so I'll take my center drill again. And I'm gonna come down and just make that mark again. And verify it with my caliper. Okay, so one inch, 938, right about, tighten that up and verify. We can see that this part, this anvil of the calipers is right on that dock that we made. So that looks good, good location. All right. So with this, uh, remember I said in my uh, in the whiteboard we don't want to drill so far that we start making that little hump or the little bump that will be on the back. So we want to keep it fifty thousandths off the bottom surface, and that's since it's a three eight stock. That's point three seven five. If I take fifty off of that, I only want to drill somewhere around. 325,000 feet. All right. Since this is not going to break through, I can go and try to sneak my parallels back in here. in there that's going to be plenty good it's going to keep supporting it so we, we're in the right location so I'll just finish off the center drill
And then now I need the, the appropriate size drill for a 1032. I have right here. It's a number a number 21 drill. Okay, I'm gonna bring this down. I want to control the depth of this. So again, we'll bring it here and lock the quill. Move the stop up so it, it hits that wheel. Alright. Now I can get the tool up out of the way. Alright. So that was the top of the part. I'll re zero my knee right here. And I want to control that depth to 325 thousandths. So I'll raise the table up that much. There's 100, 200, 325. Now I will drill this. Come down to the stock right here so we've drilled down deep enough all right once this gets down to the stock you know you've gone as deep as you need to go all right so now we have to tap this hole you've tapped here on the machine before um, so this isn't anything new. One thing I do like to do is I like to chamfer that hole. It provides for a better lead-in for those threads. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm tapping that, if I have that little chamfer in there, it helps for a nice little lead-in for these threads. So I put a nice little chamfer in there. A little heavier than I normally would if I was just deburring. But that's because for threads you need to chamfer it a little bit more. Enough to cover up the major diameter of this 1032. All right, so we'll put 1032 tap in. And then now we're just going to bring the quill down and turn it by hand. All right, make sure we really get a lot of cutting oil in there. All right, so again, I'm putting a little pressure on the, on the quill handle, and I'll just turn this by hand. until I feel it getting close to the bottom. All right. One thing you don't want to do is feel the bottom and then keep turning because that's going to break your tap in that hole. Once your tap is broken off in that hole, there's real no easy way of getting it back out. There are methods, but it, it becomes a real big headache. All right, so now I'll just Put a little upward pressure on the quill as I back this out. There we go. And that's our threads. So we, we put this 
those threads in. They may not be deep enough right now, but we've got a, another tap that we can use off the machine to make that deeper. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. Okay, so we have got our tap hole in here. And now for the next two operations where I want to put those small holes in, I want to return back to my zero. What that's going to do is, like we said at the whiteboard, it's going to clear out all the backlash. If we clear out all the backlash, that will allow us that will allow us to put these holes in as good as possible. So you notice how I've gone past the part and I go back towards this zero. Alright? I went past the part and then came back. So that's so now I'm at my X zero. I want to do the same thing on my Y. I'm back way behind the part and then drive it back. to the zero. So I've got that little center drill in there just to show you that I'm right here at the corner of the of the part, my original origin. Alright. So now that I'm at my original origin, I've gotten all the backlash out of the machine, I can go ahead and make my move in my X direction. And the X location on this will be one inch 656. All right, so I'll make that move now. So there's 200, 4, 600, 800, 1 inch, 1.2, 1.3. One point six and then fifty six. Six fifty six. All right. So I'm in my X location. Now I have to look, <coughs> excuse me, at detail A gives me my, will give me my. Uh, my Y locations, all right? Remember, it's very important to orient your drawing the way you're machining it. That way you know which way you're, you're supposed to be going, all right? So this first hole, all those are dimensioned off the center line of the part. The first hole is 63 thousandths before I get to that center line. So if I take my center line as 0.188 and subtract out the 63 thousandths, I should end up with 0.125. All right. So that's what I will do now. I'll move it into Y. I'll go negative Y, 125 thousandths. right there and I'll lock all my axes all right again since we're using the small 16th inch drill bit I am using my small little number one center drill all right don't use don't use the big one all right don't use the big one just use the small one down and just make that little mark. And I want to verify, at least in my X, that I'm correct. 
So that's 1.656, which is right there on my calipers. I'll lock it and then just verify that I did move the correct in the X. That looks right. I can also verify my Y because I was supposed to move 0.125. So there's 0.125 and I can come off this back side and measure in this direction. It may be hard for you to see on camera, but maybe if I turn my calipers around, I'm coming off that back side just making sure that that spot is in the right spot, in the right location, which it looks like it is. All right, so I'll finish off that center drill. There we go, and we'll take this out. Load my 16th inch drill. And again, I want it to be pretty far in this drill chuck to stiffen it up as much as possible. All right. Now, if you're doing the same exact way that I'm doing it, this first hole that we're drilling. I said was going to be the hole that's not all the way through, right? There was a certain depth, all right? And that depth was, uh, let me look at my notes. Two hundred and ninety thousandths. So again, we'll set this off the top. Bring my stop up. Bring the stop up, bring the lock nut up, tighten it up. All right, and then now we'll move it out of the way. I'm going to re-zero my knee. So I re-zeroed my knee, and that has to go in 290 thousandths. So I'll bring it up, bring the table up 290. That's 100, 200. 90 thousands. Right. So I'm all set up to drill that hole to the correct depth. little drills you just let the drill do the walking all right just give it a little bit of pressure there we go I hit the stop and that's as far as I could go so it's going to be hard for you to see on camera I'm sure but there is that little tiny 16th inch hole all right I did that at the correct depth my next hole is going to be a through hole, all right, so I have to move the stop out of the way. So I'll just move the stop out of the way, okay. I also want to get my parallel out of the way, all right. If I move my parallel all the way to the back, that can still stay under this part. I'm just moving it closer to the fixed jaw back here. All right, so I can drill down and there's still a gap enough for that little 16th inch drill. So if you hit the, if you hit the 
the parallel with your little 16th inch drill, you're probably pretty certain that the drill is going to break. All right, then you're going to be starting this part all over. All right, so we got the setup. Now we just need to move in the Y the rest of the way. All right, so. So again, we're at 1.188 to the center line. And then if we look at detail A, we've got to go an additional 63 thousandths. So that 0.188 plus the 063, if you add those together, will give you 251 thousandths. All right, so we're already at this location so I'm just going to continue on feeding in this direction to get to 251. I don't have to go back out and then come back on it because the device is always going in this direction away from me, right? I did bring it back so I won't have any backlash issues. So I'll just continue on. I've got to unlock my Y. I'll continue on to 251. There's 200, 251. I didn't move anything in the X, right? Because these are in line along in the same X direction. Okay, so get my little center drill again. Make a little spot and verify. I know this seems a little redundant. I've made this part hundreds of times already, but I still, even though I've made this part a bunch of times, I still like to double check. So I've got mine open at 251. And you can see that that dot is right where it's supposed to be. So I'll finish the center drill. Insert my 16th inch drill. This is our this is our exhaust, so we need this to go all the way through. Alright, I'm just keeping light pressure on it and letting the drill walk down in there. So there's those two operations. Those are done. All right. So we're all done with our holes. So now the only thing left we have to do is mill uh, the two reliefs next to this hole. So one was going to go here, and one's going to go here. All right. So. Since I'm milling, I can't mill with the drill chuck, so I'll have to get my collar.
so those, the width of those slots are 0.19, which is very close to 3 16 of an inch. So what I have is my 3 16 end mill, all right? Again, it's 3 16 right here at the cutting diameter, but it has a 3 8 shank. So I need to have my 3 8 collet in there because I'm holding on to this part of the end mill. Insert that in there. Tighten it up. Okay. So there's that. Now what I like to do for this, instead of doing a lot of math and trying to figure everything off the center line, I like to just use the the um, side of the tool to figure out where this tool is in, in relation to my part. So I'll just use the side of the tool to edge find. So I know when I touch the side of this thing, uh, I'll be able to see it or hear it. All right. If you put a little scuff mark, this is going to be the bottom of the part. You'll never see it once it all gets assembled. So I don't get too worried about uh, nicking the bottom just a little bit. So I got all my. loose. I'm just going to try to eyeball it to close to the center of the part in the Y. And I'll just feed it in until I barely hear it start to cut or I might see some chips. Alright. I just saw a little I just saw a little chips form and I heard it and if you but see on what I see on this side, there's just a very, very, very faint mark where that tool hit. So from there, I will set my zero. I'll say, that's my zero. So when we're thinking about this, I've, I've got, I've zeroed the right side of the tool, this side, as I'm looking at it, the right side of the tool at zero. All right? So when we look at our drawing, it's dimension to the bottom of that hole, to the bottom of the slot, which would be the left side. So what I like to do is I know the slot is called out for 0.19 and that this part, part has to be 0.25 from the bottom surface. So if I add those two numbers together, I get 0.44. I can move that in 0.44, and my slot should be right where it's supposed to be. So there's 200, 400, Two four or 440 thousandths. Now, if I bring this my tool down, I can see it's not over the this ring hole that we put in. All right, it looks like it right where it's supposed to be. Now, these drawings don't have a call out for the depth of these slots, but they're just relief. So, I like to do them at anywhere from 20 to 30 thousandths. Alright, 
So I'm good in my X. I really don't have to worry about my Y because the feature goes all the way through the part. So I'm not worried about setting a Y, a Y zero. All right, because we're going to feed all the way from the front to the back of the part. So if I turn this on, I'll slowly bring the knee up till it just barely makes the end of the end mill just barely makes contact. Right there. You can see. Alright, you can see that I just barely scuffed the top there. We'll call that the top of the part as zero. Alright? So I'm going to adjust my knee and re-zero out my knee. Alright, I re-zeroed it out. And I'll, I'll say I'm going to make this slot 20 thousandths. Alright, so I just have to move it a little bit. 20 thousandths. Again, it's just a relief, so any, any amount that you do this within reason between 20 and 30 thousandths is fine. All right. Now all I'm going to do, put some cutting oil on here and then just feed it through. I'm going to lock my X so it doesn't pull my table around. Go nice and carefully through here. All the way on the other side, I'll just bring it back just to clean it up. And then there's that slot. Okay? So there's that slot. Now our next slot is located, the bottom edge of it is at 0.81, and then we figure that slot is 0.19. So if you add those together, that will give you an inch. Okay? So I will just continue to move to an inch. So I was at 440, so this next zero will be 600, 800, back to that zero, and I'll be at an inch. All right, I don't want to adjust the height of anything right now, because I know that that's a 20, if I pass through there, it's going to be a 20 thou slot. All right. One thing I like to do is just visually check that I'm not gonna, that I did something wrong and I'm gonna slot over that counterboard or that, excuse me, that ring hole, all right? We definitely do not wanna slot over top of that. So it looks like I'm in the right location. So I'll go ahead and just finish slotting that off. There, it should be pretty clear that I put the two slots on either side of that green hole. Okay. So that part is, this face is, is done, but what I like to do is I like to go and face it again, the same way we did when we were doing our cylinder. I like to clean this face off, all right? So what I can do is, over here my marker kind of got wiped off, all right, reapply that if you need to. And then now I'll, I'll 
get my 3 8 end mill. Alright? Get my 3 8 end mill. Now just make a facing cut. I'm not trying to take a whole lot off. Should be much more than a couple of thousand. that a little whack. End mill should come out. And again, this is a 3 8 end mill on a 3 8 shank, so it's going to go into the same collet. Put that in there and tighten it up. Since I'm going all over the face of this, I'm not going to be worried about setting an origin. Alright, we just got to go all over this thing, so I don't get too worried about finding a zero. All I'm going to do is just make sure my, somewhere where there's black, I'm going to hover the end mill over and lock it down. Alright, I'll turn on this and I'll slowly raise the knee until we make contact. Alright, I just made contact. And if I want, I can just go up maybe a thousand, thousandth or two. And just kiss this face. Alright, I like to go nice and slow to try to give me the best surface as possible. If I feed this really fast, I'm going to end up with lots of swirls all over this face. Alright, those swirls are probably better than just the stock face. it to look good too. So I just did the back, more of the back side. And I'll just come back and get what's ever left over. So there, let me blow that off a little bit. We can see now that we've gotten all the black off. And we're left with a good clean face and we've got all of our features that we need. So again, the cylinder where we faced off a little bit right there is going to mate with this right here. So now those two surfaces are really flat and really uh, perpendicular to all these features. So when we assemble this, these faces will marry a lot fresher and cleaner than if we did do that facing operation. Again, these two facing operations, is totally up to you whether or not you do it. I just find that it helps in the, once you assemble it, uh, you'll have a lot less issues with your air engine. So that's it for setup one. We've got all of our features that we need on here. Alright, so now we're going to need to take this out of the vise. Our next setup is just to do that little 16th inch hole on the side, but it's very important that we put it on the correct side. in there. For me, I've been making my thing, my body like this. Right? 
So when I take it out, I just want to see if there's maybe just a little burst from where, where you slotted that out. So I just run a quick file down both sides just to make sure the slot when we're slotting those out there's nothing there's no burrs all right so my part was like this and now I want to put the hole what was on the back side so I have to rotate my part this way okay there's a lot of people that get confused and then roll it the wrong way and again they put the uh, they put the uh, the hole here which gives you a dual exhaust but there's no intake okay so that's not going to make your air engine run at all all right so I'm going to rotate it towards me so the face I just cut is now facing me Now since I've taken that out, I have to go and re-edge find it. And I know it's a drilling operation, so I'll just go ahead and put my drill chuck in. finder and of course we can't use the same origin that we did when we were on the other side because we've taken uh, this part out and we've moved it around right so this is why we have to re-edge find Finding off the bottom again because that's where the dimension is drawn from. Let's try that again. Okay. So that's the edge of my part. So I'll set a temporary zero, move in 100. And set my permanent zero for this setup. All right. I'll do the same thing with my Y. Set a temporary zero, move in a hundred, and then re zero to my permanent zero. All right, 
again. I like to always double check because we've committed a bunch of time already in making this part. It'd be silly just to think we did it right every single time and not verify. So I've zeroed out both axes and it is over this left upper corner where I like to pull my origins from. All right. So now we have to go to our hole location, which is going to intersect this hole, that little hole. All right, and that that dimension was 1.656. So I'll make that move in the X right now. So there's 200, 400, 600, 800, one inch. 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.6, 1 and then 56. All right. Now we have to look at where it is in the Y. And it says it's, it's on the center line, 0.19. All right. So I like to go 0.188, which is well in tolerance, and that puts it right on the center line of this face in the Y. All right, so I'll go 188. So 188. All right, I'm gonna lock all my axes. Again, since we're using the 16th inch drill, we just need that little center drill. All right, so now we're at a little bit of something I won't say it's tricky, but if you're not paying attention, you'll ruin your part, all right? When this drill, the 16th inch drill goes in, it needs to go directly into the hole that we drilled on that first face in the first setup. If we're off a little bit, if we're off like 20 thousandths or so, what's gonna happen is when that drill tries to enter into this hole, and if it's not right over the top, it's gonna to wanna to bend to get into that hole, right? Because it's not gonna be cutting on one side of the drill. So it's gonna to wanna to favor that side. And you end up bending this drill, which makes it snap, okay? So with this, I like to get down really in front of it, like so, and look at it head on and visually see if I'm right over top of this hole. All right, I'll try to find a little pointer. I'm looking at this little hole that was already made, and I want this to appear as though it's coming right over that hole. Again, if I'm favored too much one way or another, you run a high chance of breaking that drill. Okay, if you break this drill off in there, it is an extremely difficult task to get that drill out. All right. We can also take our calipers, move them out to the 1.656, like so. And just double check that way, which we're we're good. But again, the biggest the biggest thing I like to do. It's just bring this down. You can lock it in place. Get right in front of it and look straight on and make sure that that's going to be placed in right over top of the hole that's already there. All right? Hopefully I made myself clear on that. It looks, it looks good, so I'm going to 
finish center drilling. Okay? Finish center drilling. Again, with this hole, we're just going to do it until it intersects this hole right here. So we're not going very deep. Okay? So what we don't want to do is join this hole that we can see right here with the hole that's down below it that's inside the vise. I chose these parallels for this parallel height for a special reason that I can see this hole. If I lowered this down so far into the vise that I couldn't see this hole, I'd have a hard time referencing whether or not the hole I'm about to make is going to actually intersect that hole. So it's good to use a parallel height that's, that allows you to see this hole. So I'm just going deep enough to break through into that first hole. Felt it break into that hole. From there, once I feel it break into that hole, I don't want to keep on drilling because that's how drills get broken as well. All right. One little trick that I I've found is if you go ahead and just put a little oil on the drill, and with the machine turned off and you haven't moved the table, if you go and stick that hole that drill down in the hole you just made, you should see oil purging out of that first hole that we made. It may be difficult for you to see on camera, but you, if you're here at the machine, you'll be able to see a little bit of oil being purged out by that drill. That's perfect. That means you've broken into that hole. All right, so if, if oil can run out of this out this hole it means air can pass through that hole as well so that's it for setup number two all right we've got that hole that was the only thing that we needed to do so let's take this out and then we'll move to setup three that was again the only feature on this setup the last feature that we got is just the tapped hole in the bottom of it So with setup three, I'm going to be putting the tapped hole in the bottom here, all right? It's not super critical that it goes in straight as an arrow, so I don't worry and take the extra time to indicate anything in. What I do is use the side of the jaws right here as a reference for the vertical, all right? So I favor it to this side, all right? When I clamp this in, I want to clamp along the stock edges, all right? Those are the parts that haven't been touched, all right? I'll clamp it in this way, and since I'm clamping it, I'll be clamping it over here. I'll need something on this side to chop this side up, all right, to kind of shim it. That way our, our jaws don't get out of parallel. So. You can take a scrap piece of 3 8 material that's probably laying around the shop or if you don't have one or can't find one, you can just use your cylinder that you've already made and just make sure you clamp on to the um, stock side of that. So, so i got my two stock edges here. I'll just drop that on this side and I'll make sure I clamp on the stock sides. What we don't want to do is turn it this way because 
we, we faced a little bit off of this. It was a couple thousandths that we faced off of here. So this is technically thinner this way than it is this way, if that makes sense. So if we did it like this, we clamped it up, this thing would clamp correctly. So that's why we gotta go on the stock edges, all right? I'll use my a parallel here, just along the edge here, just to help seat this thing in vertically, all right? So if I clamp this down, I don't need to get too aggressive with clamping it down. We're not putting a whole lot of cutting force into this, all right? So again, this is pretty well vertical right here. Good enough for a, a threaded hole, all right? So what I need to do is edge find. Set a temporary zero. Move it in a hundred. Set that as my permanent zero. All right. And since we're moving to the center of this three eighths, we're going to move it in a hundred and eighty eight thousandths. There's a hundred hundred and eighty eight thousandths. So I'll lock my X. Now, if I so choose, I could re edge find in my Y, but my last operation was right in the center line in the Y. So I really don't have to edge find again. If, you, if you're uncertain, I would definitely edge find, all right? Because all we did was just stand it up on its edge, all right? So we're still in the center line. We still have a 3 8 or 375 gap in here, and we're right in the middle of that. So. I don't really choose to do it. If you're unsure, then then you probably should. So I'll bring my end or my edge finder down, and it looks like it's in the center. Okay. So now I can start with the 1032 tapped hole on this side. set a depth on this because we don't want to break through that board hole that we put that um, excuse me reamed hole that we put in there all right 
So we did all the calculations on the board as to how deep we want to do that. Um, I found somewhere around 475 thousandths is good. All right. I've done that math before. So. So I'll set up my quill stop. There, so it's tight against there. Retract that up. Now I'll zero my knee. All right, and then now I'll bring the table up 475 thousandths. So that's 100, 200, 300, 475. We figured that that was a safe, a safe depth to go. All right. So that's a good depth. Alright, now I'll put in my 1032 tack. Actually, before I do, I like to chamfer that hole, right? Again, it provides that lead in. That really helps out the tapping process. Now I always run these chamfer mills on a really slow speed, so on low. Alright, so I chamfered the top of that. Hopefully you can see it. That's a little bit more aggressive than it probably needed to be, but it's going to be the bottom of the part and nobody will see it. So I won't tell if you don't tell. All right. So we load up our 1032 tap. Make sure we got cutting oil on this. All right. Just like every other tapping operation, we just add a little pressure to that and start turning. Once we feel the bottom, we don't want to keep trying to make threads. All right, we just pull it on out. All right, that feels like it hit the bottom. Now just. Spin it out. All right, there we go. Now, all the chips that this tap makes will all get shoved down in the bottom. If it's a big bundle of them down there, you may have to take a smaller drill or something and dig them out if they get in the way. All right, so that's. That is done right there. That's the only feature that we had on that setup, so I can take it out. So there's my tap hole. All right. So there's only a handful of things I have to do to kind of clean this up and deburr it. We've already deburred these sides. Again, if we want to, we can flat sand this face on a little piece of emery cloth. I'll take that face. Again, we want this nice and smooth. Alright, that 
should be enough in case there was any any burrs on that face from from whatever happened all right whatever we did that cleans that up we don't really have to worry about deburring these little tiny holes because they're too small to even really deburr with any tool that you'll have at your disposal all right the only thing we can do is by hand we can put our chamfer mill or countersink into these green holes and clean that out on both sides just by hand and that's that part all right so that's uh, that's the the body um, I'll show you something about this tap hole real quick. Okay, so when we tap this hole right here, we use this tap right here. So this tap has got quite a bit of lead in, all right? So you can see this flute that's cut, maybe you can or can't, but there's a little flute that's grounded right here, okay? So this tap really doesn't start making full threads till somewhere down in this area, all right? All of this is just a lead-in to start making a chip, all right? So since we had such a shallow hole, when we put this in there, we had a lot of this lead-in in the hole, and it bottomed out before we got to some fully developed threads, all right? Again, that's probably about from here to here. This first portion is just, it tapers, and it's got quite a lead in. So we have these things called bottoming tabs, which if you put it side by side, you can see it's got a very small lead in, all right? It's flat on the bottom, all right? never want to start a hole start tapping a hole with a flat bottom because there's not enough lead in and it puts too much force on the on the cutting teeth okay so we already started it with this that's got all the lead in so what we can do is take this and finish those threads and push and then cut some more down so you'll have more fully developed threads down in this fairly shallow uh, threaded hole, all right? So, but we can't just turn this by our hands on, because we don't have that strong of a grip. So we've got this. Uh, you won't have one of these in your toolboxes, but we'll be able to provide you with one of these, and one of these will be provided uh, for the class. So they will be in a toolbox that's usually sitting on the workbench in the middle of the shop. So what we do is we just insert the square end in here and then we turn this one handle and it kind of clamps it. And then now we have a little handle, all right? This is called a tap handle. Makes sense, right? And that just allows us to twist it, all right? So all we'll want to do is make sure that that's oiled up. And we should be able just to start threading this in, okay? Because we've already established those threads. All right, it's gonna go in pretty easy for a little bit. And then it will start feeling like there's a little resistance. That doesn't mean you've hit the bottom, that just means you're starting to cut more fully developed threads. What we can do is ever so slightly just turn this and drive more fully developed threads down to the bottom. At a certain point it will feel like it got to the bottom and don't go past that. All right. You may have to rock this a little bit to break the chip and then just pull it out. So we probably only cut about an extra three or four threads, but that's going to come in handy when we assemble this, all right? 
You can see here on the end that we got just a little bit of chips that came out of there, all right? That's something you'll have to do um, to assemble it. And that should be it for part number one, which is the body.